Marshals, Marshals of the National Reception Committee trying to get the people and a salute from Mr. Nelson Mandela, his wife Winnie, greeting the people outside the fences of the Victor Verstappen prison. That is the man who the world has been waiting to see. 72 years old. I know you remember exactly where you were and what you were doing when you saw those visuals live on TV. Today we commemorate Nelson Mandela's release from prison. It was today on the 11th of February 1990 that Madiba was released unconditionally after 27 years of imprisonment. A momentous day in history, a defining moment for our country. I'm joined now by Madiba's granddaughter, Tugwini, who's uh, going to share with us exactly uh, how she felt. Now, uh, off air, I said I don't think you were old enough to remember but but you were old enough to remember was, what was it like i was old enough i was i think it was my last year in high school um and i remember it very clearly because it was a sunday and we were going out and then when we got outside um our building there was a press court there and they were like where are you guys going <laughs> and my mom says we're going out and they said no don't you know that your father is being released wow. today because i mean we knew but it wasn't really confirmed we didn't know whether it was going to happen that you know that day specifically um, so we all, you know, rushed inside and we all watched it on television. Um, I mean, it was a day of, uh, I think, jubilation and curiosity for my siblings and I because I had only seen my grandfather once before, um, twice before. Um, so, you know, I didn't really remember what he looked like. So, um, you know, we were all very uh, excited and curious to, to see him and to see, you know, that this uh, icon that everybody had been talking about. Um, because ultimately, to us, he was just granddad, I think. Mm. So, you know, it, it, we didn't have a, a sense of the magnitude mm. of what was happening. But all in all, we were very excited and we were happy that he was out. Paint a picture for me. Do you remember the, the sights, the sounds, the smell? Perhaps uh, was, your, was your mom anxious? Uh, what did the family members say? What are you, what oh, are my the mom feelings? was crying. I mean, my mom was crying. That's what I remember. And my mother never cried. So, you know, that was a first for me. Um, and I just think uh, we're anxious, we're pensive. Um, there were a lot of interviews that day, um, you know, and there was just a lot of excitement and we didn't necessarily know, what, you know, what to expect. Um, but what, what we knew is that we wanted to come back home, um, you know, and my mom wanted to come back home for, for her parents and I think to reestablish the relationship that she didn't necessarily have with, with, with her father. Uh, when Madiba came out of prison, I, I, I suspect you had one notion of this is how it's going to be like. We'll sit around the yeah. fire, hold hands. It will be lovely. But he, in effect, belonged to the world. Yeah. He came out, but he didn't really belong to you. What was that like? Were, was there a bit of a dichotomy in terms of emotions? There? Oh, yeah. I mean, I think there were times when we as a grandchildren were hurt um, because we didn't have him to ourselves. I mean, we'd go to the house sometimes and there'd be people there. Um, he was constantly surrounded by people. And I think we cherish the moments where we sort of sat around the lunch table, the dinner table, and my grandfather would regale us with stories of when he was younger and, you know, what he went through and how he ran away to Joburg. Um, and we just loved, you know, his sense of humor. Um, and I think that those are the moments where we felt the most connected um, with him. I mean, obviously, we had to accept that, you know, he had a bigger role, a far bigger role to play. Um, and my grandfather may, had made his choice, and we, we, we had to be okay with that. It, it took us a while um, to accept that, um, but, you know, um, I think that my grandfather left us a beautiful legacy um, for us to maintain as his family and a great example for us to follow. So, Gwini, it's the first time we mark this anniversary after the passing of Dadu yeah. Madiba. Uh, how, how does that make you feel, just looking back? Um, wistful, I think. Uh, a, bit, a little bit emotional. Yeah. Um, because as I said, my grandfather was a beautiful human being. You know, he had his flaws, but one of the greatest lessons that he taught us was that, you know, um, being a Mandela in name only wasn't enough. We had to be Mandelas in deed too. Um, so, you know, we constantly, that's something that we live by um, on a daily basis. You know, my grandfather treated the street sweeper the same way that he would treat a king or queen. Um, he believed that everybody needed to be treated with dignity and respect. So that is a, you know, that is a modus operandi that we follow ourselves as human beings. We're a very easy, laid-back family. Um, so, yeah, it's bittersweet, you know. Um, you know, we're glad that my grandfather is resting now. Uh, but at the same time, we still wish that we, you know, we had him with us, you know. Because, I, like I said, my grandfather had a great sense of humor, you know. Um, there are moments where you go and see him and you just, like, have 
this amazing connection with him. And you think, yeah, this, you know, we're really related. We're, we share DNA. Um, so we miss those moments. And we miss the moments, like I said, where he would tell us, you know, about his childhood and his mom. And, you know, he was a mama's boy. He loved his mother. <laughs> um, and, you know, just his friendships and, you know, just life lessons in general. So we miss that part the most. Do you feel the pressure or the heavy burden of the Mandela name that mm -hmm. you have to live up to this uh, man of great stature who, as you've mentioned, has his flaws, but I think the world chooses to see him in a saintly uh, uh, persona. Uh, do you feel the pressure? Do you feel the burden? I think when I was younger, I did. Uh, because I think when you're younger, you want to be your own person. Um, you know, you don't necessarily want people to judge you because of your name, whether that's a good or bad thing. Uh, but I think that as we grew older, we just grew to accept it. Um, we don't feel burdened now, we feel lighter. Because, um, you know, my grandfather, like I said, left us a beautiful legacy. Um, we feel privileged to have um, been in his company. We feel privileged to have been his grandkids and his children. Um, and so, you know, our focus now as his family is to make sure that my grandfather's legacy continues and that the legacy of our family continues because Nelson Mandela didn't just fall from the sky. Yeah. Yeah. He has a sense of yeah. place. He was yeah. born somewhere of certain parents. Um, all the values that my grandfather espouses, he learned from somewhere. So we are eager for people to learn that story, not necessarily of Nelson Mandela, the politician, because mm -hmm. what formed Nelson Mandela as a politician mm -hmm. is all those values and um, all of those things that he learned yeah. when he was growing up in the great place with Chief, with Chief Jong Indaba. So, you know, for us, those are the things that we want people to know. Mm -hmm. uh, you just spoke about how Madiba had a sense of, of place and yeah. belonging, that he didn't fall from the sky. Yeah. I, I want to take that and twist a little bit, that mm -hmm. the apple didn't fall far from the tree oh, either. Thank, I oh, see, thank you very I much. I see a lot thank of him you. in thank you. you. I see a lot of him in, in, your, in, in your family, extended uh, relatives as well. Yeah. Uh, your mom, I see him in, in your... I, I mean, I can name them. Yeah. Uh, but also in, I think, in the clip that we're about to show... Mm -hmm. Of, of, of Zinzi Mandela, yes. your aunt. Yes, my of aunt. Your aunt. Yes. And we see how she also takes on that, that role of, of leadership yeah. in very turbulent times. So I wonder if we can play that just pending the release of Madiba all those years ago. This is what Zinzi had to say. Who may decide who will govern them? I cherish my own freedom today, but I care even more for your freedom. <laughs> They are addressing the crowd in Soweto before the release of Udadu Nelson Mandela, of course, uh, unconditionally this time, because remember, there were conditions that he could be released, uh, but he refused that, and that was uh, the contents or the details in that speech where Madiba was saying that he refuses to be released mm. on other terms and conditions. He wants to be released unconditionally. Yeah. Uh, Tugwini, how should South Africans mark today, in your opinion? I think it's just in, in being good people. Yeah. I think, you know, being kind and generous to each other. I think that um, as South Africans, we just have a, an, a, an amazing um, spirit. We're very resilient. We've made it through very turbulent times. And I think that we should continue in that spirit, um, no matter what it is that's going on. I think that, um, you know, my grandfather would have wanted us, um, just as a nation, regardless of color, color or creed, to be united. Um, you know, it, because if, if we're not, then South Africa goes nowhere. Mm. Um, and I think that, you know, we have a long road ahead of ourselves. There's a lot of work for us to do. And I think that we should rather mm. focus on the positive as opposed to the things that divide us. We'll leave it there. Thank you yeah. so much again for joining us. Thank you to very much. Mandela, the granddaughter of the late Nelson Mandela. Let's leave it there.